Battlefield 4 brings Commander Mode back to the series, and to the first timer, it may be a little confusing. Since there is so much information to cover, we'll split it up into two parts. Today we'll go over the layout and explain the basic functions and modes in part 1 of my Commander tutorial. If you're already familiar with the game mechanics, you may want to skip to part 2 for tips and tricks. Before we begin, it's important to know that you're not playing on the field and can't swap back and forth as soldier and commander. You can only join a server as the commander or join as the soldier. If you want to swap, you'll have to exit the game and rejoin, but be warned that you will lose your previous stats from that match. First, let's look at your screen and get familiar with it. You play using the tactical map layout that you'll typically see in your soldier deployment screen. It has many of the same features, such as base locations, capture points or flags, score and timer. You can see every player's location on your team, but you can't see the enemy's players unless they are firing, have been spotted, or doing something that would otherwise show up on someone's minimap. Only then will they appear on the map. So it's not unusual for half of the opposition's team to be hidden at any given time. Since Commander Mode is offered on both PC and tablet, we'll cover the PC aspect first. In the top left corner, you'll see a legend of standard actions called Assets. For all of your assets, there's a usage meter and a recharge meter. When you use an asset, its usage turns blue and shrinks to the left, and when it recharges, it turns gold and expands to the right. Some assets are quicker than others. Below that is a green box with four icons for squad base actions. When squads accept orders or carry the orders out, the commander's squad action bar fills up. The more it fills up, the more actions are accessible to use, but we'll get back to that later. On the bottom left is your player feed. That can show what the squad leader is seeing. On the right of the screen are the list of squads on your team. Squads with a highlighted star mean the squad leader is alive and can receive orders. You can also right click anywhere on the map for a menu of all actions you can perform. The top axis are common actions that you always have access to. The little air drone icon is for scan UAV. It lets you see enemy players or occupied vehicles in a limited circular space around where you perform it. So they act just like motion sensors for the recon class. These drones are visible by players on the field if they look up, but they are short-lived and used frequently. The circle with diagonal lines through it is the EMP UAV. It behaves the same as the scan UAV, but it blocks the enemy players and commander from seeing anyone inside it. However, your team can still see them, and they last for about 20 seconds. Now the next icon is conditional on the enemy's performance. If a player has a kill streak of 6 or more, they will be designated as a high value target, or HVT. They will appear with a partial square around their icon on the map. You can designate them as an HVT using the triangle with partial diamond icon. This will show the player's location constantly to your team, not just on the minimap, but in their field of view as well. Players designated as HVT will receive bonuses as they make kills. Likewise, opponents and commanders will receive bonuses if they kill the HVT. The clock icon is the evac order. If a cruise missile is inbound or Levolution is threatening your squads, you can issue an evac order to a small area and all of your players will receive warning to leave the area. Lastly, the star icon is the proxy attack. It completely disables the enemy commander from all actions for 15 seconds, but it has a really long recharge time of 5 minutes. The bottom axis of icons are squad base actions. The triangle is for issuing movement orders to your squads. Whether it's to defend or attack a flag, or to move to an open portion of the map, it will offer the option to the squad leader. When you issue an order, a hashed line will appear on the map. If the squad leader accepts the order, the line will turn solid. The star with the upwards arrow is to promote a squad. It increases their squad perks by one level each time. The box with the parachute are for supply drops. It lets players heal, stock up on ammunition, or even change classes while on the field. The lightning bolt is rapid deploy and cuts the squad's respawn time in half. The car with the parachute is a vehicle drop, which are four wheelers or jet skis. The right axis of icons are flag based actions. Depending on which mode you're playing in, your actions will be available or not based on whatever flags you have. The triangle with the line is the infantry scan. It will scan in a vertical line from left to right across the map and will provide brief player locations in the line's wake. The tank icon with the line is the vehicle scan. It works in the same way as the infantry scan, but the line is horizontal across your screen and scans from bottom to top for enemy vehicles. Depending on the map and mode you're playing on, you will see either a missile icon or an airplane icon. The missile icon is probably the most fun icon you'll have while playing Commander. It's the cruise missile. It takes about 30 seconds to hit the target, but that may vary by a few seconds based on the map you're playing on, the location of the target, and the mode you're playing in. 
The airplane icon is to deploy the AC-130 gunship, and will circle the flag that controls its availability. If enemy soldiers occupy the gunship when your team captures the flag, the vehicle will be destroyed and kill the occupants, for which you'll get credit for. You will then need to redeploy an empty gunship. If you zoom all the way in, you can see the map in full 3D from a top-down perspective. If you click on view mode, it'll switch over to thermal imaging, which can be quite useful on maps like Siege of Shanghai when the dust cloud kicks up. On the bottom left of the screen is the team setup menu. Here you can see your commander approval rating from the squad leaders. If your approval rating drops too low, there will be a mutiny and you will be kicked from the server. You can also resign, but you will leave the server if you do so. To speak to the squads directly, select the squad you wish to speak with and hit the VoIP key. All the players in the squad can communicate with the commander when that squad is selected. If another squad is selected, the squad can't communicate with you. If you're playing on a tablet, it's a very similar experience, but not as robust. All of your actions will be listed on the left hand side, no menu pop up is necessary. Touch the action you wish to perform and drag it onto the map. It doesn't matter where you release it for things like proxy attack, infantry scan, or vehicle scans, but all other actions do. For everything else, where you release it will determine where the action is performed. The squads are still listed on the right, but you can't see the individual player classes in each squad. You also don't get the player feed or 3D view when the map is fully zoomed in. To promote a squad or give rapid deploy, you need to drag the icon onto the squad leader on the map. You may have to zoom in to select the correct squad if multiple squad leaders are near each other. To issue orders, you drag the squad icon on the right to the destination onto the map. Finally, we'll cover the game modes. Commander mode is only available in Conquest Large, Conquest, Obliteration, and Rush. In both Conquest modes, Infantry scans, vehicle scans, cruise missiles, and gunships are only available to Commander if the team is in control of the flags. Sea flag is usually the center flag on the map, but it's the most important to capture as it generally controls the cruise missile and gunships. In obliteration, both teams have three control points and all assets are available at startup. As those points are blown up though, you lose some assets. Again, sea flag is the most important for the same reason, but it will vary based on the map. In Rush, there are no assets to control, and the commander primarily just serves for surveillance and supplies. That's all for the basics of commander mode, but stay tuned for tips and tricks in part 2 of this tutorial.